Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel. So today we're doing this ink in water effect with Chaos Phoenix. So it's no longer called Phoenix FD, it's just called Phoenix now. And it's inspired by this viral ink in water video that you might have seen. I will put the link in the description. If you've been enjoying these tutorials, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and select all. This way you will get notified when I upload a new tutorial. So this is a beginner friendly tutorial that you can do even if you're new to Phoenix. We're gonna set up a few emitters, do some RGB mixing, some negative buoyancy to make it fall down and get something like this. So this is gonna be my starter scene. You can use any object here. Under customize unit setup, as always, I'm working under metric centimeters. One unit is one centimeter. So your scene scale is very important when it comes to simulation. So if you want to get the same result as me, make sure that you're working in the same units. So we're gonna need a Phoenix grid. So just make the create Phoenix fire and smoke grid, like auto grid, and just drag out sort of like a water tank for our ink. Next, we're gonna need an emitter for the ink to come out of, or the smoke. So I'll just do cylinder, right click, make it an edible poly, select the bottom polygon, and set the ID to some number, so I'll just do 10. If you've been following the channel, we've done this process a million times. This is just because we need the smoke to come out of just the bottom polygon of the cylinder to get this kind of look. And let's move it in position above our letter S here. And then you can go to frame zero, hit auto key, make a key, and then go to frame 50 and move it, right? So we want it to move from left to right to get a cooler effect. And you can select all the keyframes, click on this curve editor, and set it to auto. Um, this way it will be like a smooth keyframe, so it will slowly start and then slowly stop. Next, we need a source to emit the smoke, so I'll just use the shortcut down here and just create a standard Phoenix source. So here, actually, I just wanna emit an outgoing velocity of 50 centimeters for 50 frames, and then I want it to stop. So I'll just go to frame zero, set a key, then go to frame 50, set another key, and then go to frame 51, and set this to zero. So on frame 50, it should be 50. On frame 51, it's zero. So that's how we get that sort of injection of ink and then it stops and just falls down like this. So for the emitter, I just wanna click add and add our cylinder. And before you forget, go to polygon ID and set it to 10. We wanna disable temperature because we don't really want the smoke to be affected by temperature at all. We're just gonna control it with buoyancy. Enable RGB and set the color to whatever you want, but I'll just do that sort of blue. And then we actually need to repeat this process because we need more color. So I'll just copy the source, hold shift, drag, say a copy, and let's change the color here to, let's say, pink, and we need to copy our cylinder, so I'll just hold shift as well. And if you want it to move from left to right, you can basically just swap the keyframe. So I'll just take the keyframe on frame 0 and move it past 50, and then take the keyframe on frame 50, move it to 0. So they've just swapped places, so now one of them is going from left to right, and the other is going right to left. So for the second source, I'll just need to pick the second cylinder. And this is good for now. Of course, if you wanted more emitters and more colors, you can just repeat this process. So in this example, I did four of them. So again, I would just copy the source, make another source, um, change the color, and that's how you get more colors going on. So now for the Phoenix grid under dynamics, we need to set the smoke buoyancy to minus 0.5. So this is what will make the smoke just fall down instead of rise up. Next, you actually wanna turn off vorticity. So turn off massive vorticity and set classic vorticity to zero. So vorticity will make the smoke break up, but we want it to sort of stay together and get these big thick plumes, which make it look more like ink. The fluid conservation I'll set to 16. So this helps preserve that nice movement of the smoke, these nice plumes, how they move sort of like they're in water. So to get that nice movement in the smoke, um, it's good to raise this number. You can even go to something like 32 and get something even nicer. For steps per frame, I'll do two, um, just because the cylinders are moving pretty fast and you want Phoenix to be able to catch all that movement without any steppiness in the smoke. So steps per frame, it's important that you raise that. Now, if you wanna have something going through the smoke later, like this ball ends up going through the ink, you might even raise this to four um, to make sure that there's nice interaction between the object and the smoke. So then under output, 
you want to make sure you output grid RGB. If you want to be able to render this with motion blur, also output velocity. And of course, select the path of where you want to save the cache for the simulation. Under preview, you want to enable the GPU preview in the viewport. And under grid, as far as the resolution goes, I did 0.4 centimeters for my final simulation for this result. However, for now, we can just leave it at maybe one centimeter just so that it's faster and then we can raise that. You want to jam all of the container walls so that the smoke bounces off the wall. So I'll just say jam both on all axes here. So with all of this set up, let's just start the simulation and see if it's working. And it is working beautifully. We have our smoke or ink being emitted here. So I'll just stop the simulation. It just doesn't have the colors right now. So under rendering volumetric options, you want to go under smoke color and say based on RGB and the colors should show up. And to get that ink look, we need to make the smoke very thick. So under smoke opacity, you want to set the opacity all the way to one. So this will basically make it 100% opaque, which is perfect for us to get this look. So now just to make it a bit more interesting, you can add that sphere like I had in my example over here and just animate that to go from left to right. And it's going to go through the smoke and just make it look pretty cool. So I just switched to my original setup where I have more of the colors. So this is what it looked like for me. So the only thing that I did in the end was raise the resolution. So under grid, I set the cell size to 0.4 centimeters. You can go even lower and get even nicer detail if you would like. It's just going to take longer to sim. And then the rest of it is the same as pretty much all of my tutorials. So I just have my V-Ray lights and my little studio over here. Render it out add some curves, a contrast, color correction in After Effect, and then you should end up with something that looks like this. Now, of course, you can play around with this, inject the smoke in super cool ways, have objects go through it. You can pretty much just look at this video for reference and see how far you can push this if you would like, right? So like this is super cool. So I would encourage you to play around. It's super easy to set up and super fun to watch. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you're finding these tutorials helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell because I will be uploading more tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.